Thank you. Yeah. But thanks for having me here in the B-Sides. I'm Andreas from company Macandra and I'm also working in at OSF. So just a second for about me, I'm living in a small town near Augsburg. That's uh, south of Augsburg, near Munich. I'm an operations engineer on the day at Macandra and at night I'm working on Suricata. I'm part of the core team of the OSF. And yeah, you'll find me on Twitter at Shadowhunter. So, anyone here who has heard about Suricata already? Yeah, one third half amount of the people, that's cool. Okay, so for those of you who don't know uh, Suricata, it's a GPL version 2 open source software written mainly in C. Um, we are experimenting a little bit of Rust uh, in the recent time. It's an IDS, IPS, NSM engine. And it's backed by the Open Information Security Foundation. That's a nonprofit foundation based in the US. So all the money uh, and everything we are gathering is put into the OSF and is financing the people who are developing uh, Suricata and uh, hosting, for example, Suricon, which I will point out later on. Yeah, the money is coming on, uh, in from consortium members, that's companies who pay a special amount of money and are listed on our website and also from donations and trainings. It's really community driven. So we have some core dev developers, but we also have a lot of people working on specific parts of Suricata and we really like working with the community and adding new features uh, that are requested by the community. So the most recent version we have is 3.21 and soon, like in May maybe, we will um, release version 4. So why should you use an uh, IDS or IPS? So who is using IDS, IPS in this network already? So not that many people, okay. So you can analyze the whole traffic of your network, the connections and the flow. So whatever you want to look into, you can do it with the Ricata and choose the parameters you want to have. You can detect suspicious and malicious traffic. It's one of the main purposes you want to use it according to, to for example, emerging threat skies, they write signatures where you can detect, for example, malware. But you can also look for invalid traffic or some uh, traffic that doesn't look real or something that you would expect in your network, but doesn't really harm your network, for example. You get a really advanced and detailed evaluation of your network. So it's not only for incident response and detection of threats, it's also <coughs> learn more about your network, what's happening in your network. And in my opinion, it's a valuable addition to your security concept. You shouldn't rely on just one part, that's for sure, but adding this to your firewall, to other systems, might make sense. So, I want to talk a little bit about the features uh, Suricata has, um, and I will, some of them, uh, explain more deeply, and in the end I will have a <coughs> short demo about four or five features we have. So, Suricata is multi-threading. So, our main goal is to have high performance. We have scenarios where we have 20 to 40 gig uh, Ethernet uh, connections that are handled by one machine. Of course, you need a powerful machine like a Intel Xeon processor with like 16 cores, for example, but Suricata can handle such huge traffic thanks to the multi threading. There's also some hardware acceleration. Um, there are some dedicated hardware devices you can buy from other vendors um, that provide dedicated uh, performance improvements for your network. We have a lot of prot protocol detection. So for example, HTTP yeah, that's the most, uh, most important uh, protocol, but we also have DNS. That's the connection we have to the talk uh, before me. We can look into TLS, not into the traffic itself, since it's encrypted, but all the metadata that's coming with TLS. And uh, we already have some parts ready for SMB, and are working to finishing SMB protocol detections really soon. One feature I will show you later on is file extraction. So while you're sitting on your network, you can try to extract files from the network. For example, if you have HTTP traffic, you can extract uh, pictures, you can extract PDFs or even uh, binaries. One nice feature is the EVE JSON logging output. You will see later on. You get a lot of information out of it, and then it's your job to make the best out of it. Maybe put it into an alt stack or Splunk, um, but you get a lot of information. You will see later on how they look, will look like. Yeah, Lua scripting is also a nice feature. If you say, okay, I'm not fine with the signatures, that's too low level, I want to do much more with my traffic, I want to analyze more and want to add some sort of more logical uh, parts into the um, uh, signatures I want to check, you can do this, do this with Lua scripting. 
We also have the PCAP analysis, um, so you can feed a PCAP into Suricata and run the same stuff you would, for example, if you attach it to an interface. So we've seen in the last talk um, how you can work with T-Shark and um, TCP dump. What you get out of the TCP dump he wrote in his, uh, in his example, you can feed it into Suricata and do more detection on the traffic. We support IP reputation, so if you want to gather some information about specific IP addresses and want to yeah, list them as good or bad, you can include this as well in Suricata. We have a huge config file, especially huge because we try to document a lot into the uh, config file itself. You can do a lot of customization, so if something is not working as you expect, try the config file, see if you have find some parameter to suit Suricata to your environment. Since there's so many things, you might need to tune uh, performance-wise. Um, we try to add as much as possible. We are uh, working with the people from Emerging Threads. Uh, they are providing us with optimized uh, malware uh, signatures. They are not just working for Suricata, they are also working with Snort, but they use the specific keywords Suricata has implemented. So if you want to use optimized uh, signatures, you might go with the Emerging Threads guys and a lot of more features. So if you're looking into how can I acquire the packets on my, uh, my network, do you have some options to choose from? So if you're having a Linux-based system, I would recommend using AF-Packet, especially if you're using quite modern uh, Linux distribution, since AF-Packet version 3 was released and we included the support and kind of makes PF-Ring obsolete. PF-Ring is another option to packet capture. There's also a commercial version called PF-Ring Zero Coffee. It's also bypassing the kernel, but from our view, AF Packet already with version 3 can achieve the same amount of performance uh, nowadays with Linux. On every system, we can use the blip PCAP, but it's the most slow version, so if you're running for 10 or 20 gigabyte Ethernet, you don't want to use the PCAP version. And for the P BSD guys, for example, the people with um, PF sense are using uh, BSD, there we have NetMap, which is quite similar to AF Packet. So when you think about where should I put Suricata, well, you have several options. If your focus is detection, you might use a switch with a mirror port who is copying the whole traffic, and then you will send it into a dedicated machine for Suricata. Doesn't interfere the traffic, and you can analyze uh, what's on your network. You can use a tap device, which is a more expensive way to do it quite similar, or you just use your normal gateway and have a dedicated NIC uh, that's working on a system that's within the traffic you have, and let it interfere with the and let uh, inspect the traffic you have on your gateway. So that's up to you, whatever you uh, prefer. If you want to go for the prevention mode, uh, intrusion prevention, you can either use AF packet or NetMap. Then you have to use two uh, network interfaces, and you attach one for the incoming, one for the outgoing. You'd have to forward all the traffic. If you want to do more packet filtering while you're uh, doing prevention mode, you can use the NFQ NetFilter IP tables target. Um, it's slower than the first one with AF packet, but you have the option to, form, for example, discard some packages that you say, okay, I don't want to inspect anything else than HTTP traffic, for example. Mm -hmm. So PCAP analysis is quite easy. You can just run Suricata with this command, minus R, PCAP command, and it's running the PCAP. I will show you later on. Or you can use the Unix socket mode. That's a bit, little bit more complex. You run Suricata, it's listening on the Unix socket, and you can feed the Unix socket with several PCAPs. For example, you can put in 100 PCAPs and Suricata is working on them. You also get some output, some information about the key packs, PCAPs, at what point you are already. So it's a more advanced version. So when you're talking about signatures in Suricata, I want to show a small example how a signature might look like. So you see the first part is the alert. That's the keyword for the action. So the normal one would be alert. So if this happens, show me alert in my log files. You can also choose drop in the prevention mode, saying, okay, if this happens in my traffic, I want to drop this traffic. You can also reject the traffic. And there's also the option to pass traffic, saying, okay, if this traffic or this IP range is coming, just pass the traffic. Then you get the protocol. In this example, we're looking for HTTP traffic. Then you have the information, the metadata about source IP, destination <coughs> IP, and the ports used. In this example, you're using um, a variable with HomeNet, where you have included, for example, your RFC uh, conform uh, local network, saying, okay, I'm using any source of port, and I want to see every HTTP traffic that's going anywhere in the internet. 
Within the brackets, you have the signature itself. You have a message that's just for logging. So if this rule hits, you see outgoing basic of uh, encrypted detected. This is the part of what you see in your log file. Then we want to make sure that the flow is established to the server. Then we're looking at the content itself. As you can see, we're looking for authorization basic and some uh, dedicated parts of the payload. We also can say, okay, it must be within uh, 32 bytes and we want to lower the threshold. For example, we don't want to see this every second all the time. So we say, okay, count it once, only 300 seconds. So your log won't get full uh, with all the signatures if they're sitting all the time. Yeah, reference, class type and sit are also metadata for the signature itself. The SID is helping if you want to talk with the people from Emerging Threads, for example, saying, okay, I have a false positive. This is the SID <coughs> ID. That's the problematic rule. Uh, so that will help for that. File extraction. So as I told you, the Recata can extract files. And that's quite easy if you're using HTTP or SMTP. You can say, okay, I have HTTP traffic and I'm interested in trying to um, detect malicious uh, files. I want to file, uh, save those files out. You also get the metadata with the files. And this is a simple rule. Um, again, you want to tr trigger an alert with HTTP traffic. Now in this case, you don't care uh, what IP address is used, what port is used. You have a message, okay, store all the files. And you just say file store, and it's doing its job. You don't want to run this on your network, unless you have a small network, since it's storing all the files coming through the network. Um, but just that you get an idea how easy it is to, to use that feature. If you go to the pro protocol detections, Suricata is offering several keywords dedicated to each uh, protocol. So for example, for HTTP, you can try to match on the URL, you can try to match on the method or the user agent. For DNS, you can match on the query you have seen or the response. And with TLS, you can look into the assert subject, the fingerprint, and all you see from the unencrypted part of the TLS connection. So, for example, we have one rule that triggered. There's the small one-liner. Okay, it's more lines on the, on the slide, but in your system it will be one line. So, in this example, a rule did trigger. So, we see the timestamp. We see the SID of the, of the rule that trigger. Then the description. That's the message we saw in uh, former times. ET for emerging threats, mail by user agent, a classification, okay, that's the signature for uh, network uh, detection that there was a malware detected, and it was TCP traffic coming from that IP, source IP with that source uh, port, and it was sent to this uh, IP and the HTTP port 80. If you want to have just this one line, just use the fast log and you're fine to go, but if you want to have more information, you go for the Eve JSON output, so that's the same rule, the trigger, but much more information. Again, you have the timestamp, but now you also get the flow ID. This is, this is important later on for the demo. You see the event type alert. So in the demo I will show you, we have different event types. So event type alert is what you see in the signature. Then we also have event type for the dedicated protocol. We have event type for the stats, uh, how Suricata is performing and all that stuff. You get the metadata again with the IP supports but you also get within the alert more details. For example, you see on the lower part, it's HTTP and it's looking more, uh, into more details. So we get the host name that was used, we're getting the URL that is used, we get the user agent, the method, the protocol, and so on. So it's quite verbose, but depending on your setup, you might really want to look into the details. So if you want to use the Recata, I want to give you some uh, considerations you need to think of especially if we want, are looking for the hardware. As I said, you can, for now we have like 10 to 20 gigabyte uh, a gig uh, Ethernet working with like Intel Xeon processor. We are working on some setups with 100 gig, the limiting factors are the CPU and uh, network card, especially in regards to the traffic and the bandwidth. Depending on how many rules and signatures you are using, uh, it's the memory that's limiting. If you're using a lot of logging and outputs, of course, you might want to see uh, if you attach SSAD instead of a normal hard disk. And you need to think, do, they, do we want to use the IDS mode or the IPS mode? Interfering with the traffic in IPS mode is much more hard and more limiting to the hardware than IDS mode. You can also use additional tools for uh, analyzing the uh, logs you get. 
Log aggregation with Elk or Splunk is easy to use. We also uh, support Redis, for example. And you might want to add a tool for rule set and management. If you want to have want to get uh, more information about Suricata, I pointed out the documentation. We have a red line for issue tracking. We have a mailing list. We are also active at the uh, IFC network, uh, Suricata. OSF itself is offering training. Uh, for example, uh, in Heidelberg and Marsh, I've been in the, at a training we offered for the people there. Um, and also the company I'm working on, Macandra, is uh, offering consulting. I also want to point out the Suricon is coming up in Prague this year in November. There's also a, a training for the Suricon. The call for papers is still open, so if you're doing anything, it mustn't be about Suricata itself or something related to IDS, IPS and all that stuff, feel free to look at our site and see if you want to submit the paper for the Suricon. We would really uh, uh, be glad if you join us there. So, we have some time for demo. So, for example, this is just a simple example. I'm running Suricata on a PCAP I've recorded yesterday. Uh, I'm pointing out the config file, I'm pointing out the PCAP I'm using, and I'm having a dedicated rule file. So, that's quite fast. Suricata so has been running, and now we want to look into what file I have extracted. That's the file I've got from the HTTP traffic. I also get the metadata. So for example, you can see the timestamp, the IP address, destination IP. Can you increase the font? Is it still so small? Sorry. Okay, like this. Can everyone read that? Yeah. So as you can see, you got the source IP, destination IP, the HTTP, and also the file name. It's using libmagic to determine what sort of file it is. <laughs> By the way, it was just a wget command, um, not that special. Just need to copy this one. I will show you two outputs from the... So this is the line I've talked about. Just one line, this alerted the trigger and extracted the files with the relevant metadata. And this is the same alert, but now I'm looking into the flow ID. I'm using the JQ command, which is helpful if you're playing around with JSON output. And you see there's a lot of output. Just a quick look at it. So you have Again, the timestamp and all the relevant metadata. At the bottom, you see just cute animals. That's the HTTP part. And as I already told you, we have a dedicated event type HTTP. So everything here is just is, is not part of the alert, but it's telling us about all happening uh, with the flow relevant to HTTP with that uh, with that flow uh, network flow. We also have the event type file info, as you can see here. And the event type DNS, that was the initial request for this um, website. And even the stats on the, on the bottom, how many packets have been proceed. Normally you would see if there are package size, the drops. So we get a lot of information out of it. Yeah, so it's quite easy to run Suricata. And analyze PCAPs. I could have run the same on, for example, my interface on my wireless card and do the wget and you would have seen the same, but I wasn't sure if the network is working, so it's easier to showcase that with a PCAP. So, thanks. And um, any questions? Stuart Pot, that seems like a very interesting tool. Questions? You don't want that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I miss uh, two things. One are uh, the signatures of the traffic or the captures. Are you providing any kind of signatures like uh, message this digits, like a SHA or MD5 or whatever to sign the captures and, the, for example, the images and, and the logs? Do you mean the, the files uh, that are, I've extracted? 
Yeah. Yeah, we offer MD5 and now let's uh, share a uh, checksumming so you can add this uh, to the output as well so you can make sure that's the same file every time, for example, or to compare it with your another output on another place. And the output models are JSON, but uh, also uh, syslog, for example, syslog ng. Yeah, you can you can add syslog, for example, for the normal to repair the output. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the, mo the most robust output is the one with JSON. That's the one we are promoting the most. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you still have a question, Jen? Or? Yeah. Um, when mm -hmm. you're running it in I, so in for uh, his NAS protection. protection mode, and you have two network <coughs> marks and you're running it through. Um, what sort of latency does that add? It's hard to tell. The, depending on your on your hardware and your network cards, you might even not recognize the delay. But if you have a lot of traffic and a slow hardware, you might recognize it to like 100, 200 milliseconds. So it really depends on your hardware. Mm -hmm. And how, how many rule sets you're using. If you're just using 10 rules, then it's passing quite fast. If you, so it's hard to tell. If you have quite a fast hardware and a normal uh, setting, you should recognize the delay. It's really close, uh, small, but I have setups with you won't recognize the delay, and I have setups maybe we can recognize the delay. That's hard to tell. Are you using cache? Are you using memory cache for packets? Yeah, you need to, uh, of course you need to cache some sort of packets uh, if you want to look into the flow. Um, since you, if you're looking just to the packets, you can't have some yeah. sort of flow detection. Yeah. It's configurable? Yeah, you can configure it. You can configure a lot of the parameters. For example, if you want to extract the files from HTTP, you can define the request, uh, the response body limit. So you can say, okay, I don't want to look into files bigger than one megabyte, for example, since it might decrease the performance. Yeah. Cool. Another question? Um, so first off, thank you for your work. Um, my, I understand the idea is uh, IPS element of Suricara. Um, but for file carving and flow processing, how does it compare to Bro, for example? So um, there are quite a lot of similarities to Bro. Um, so Bro has more features about, for example, if you want to add your own protocol detection, it's easier with Bro to do that. Um, but from the networking side and what you can see and extract, besides the protocol detection I talked, we're quite similar. So um, we also have some setups where the people are using Suricata and Bro <coughs> and to see if you see some sort of mismatch with the data. Um, but yeah, there are some similarities to Bro as well. So I can also use Bro capturing and feed into Suricata for, for yeah. a detection. Yeah. Or, the, or vice versa, mm -hmm. whatever you like. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.